repercussions over here. Yeah, it, 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 who's had her hand up first? She was the first person ever had up. Just to be clear. Uh, I actually have two questions and an affirmation for you when you were describing your scientific method of how people um, create characters and how you like to write it out. Yeah. You can still do that, except it's on the internet now. I know. <laughs> it's like um, role playing on, games. On that um, topic, uh, I wanted to ask you how you feel that has the consumption of meat changed? So much in like the past generation, where we're so much more exposed to media. Do is that the sort of thing that maybe might limit us when we think of theater as what's possible? For example, you were explaining when you would do a show in Toronto that goes to the moon and more people, how you do it in film, and then how you do it in theater. Do you think that because we've changed the type of media that we consume and how much and how often we consume it, is that the kind of thing that these are? to sort of not be able to sort of gather the gonads to go for something that they can only imagine like this is possible for film but not for theater. So can you give me the, sec the second part of that question in a simpler <coughs> fashion because I got a little lost there. Um, do, do you think that the way we consume media now, like do you think that because we are so used to it, we are going to be an idea and we'll say, I know how I would do that in a movie, but I don't see it happening on stage. I, I think that has to do with, um, people's ignorance about what can actually be done on the stage. And I do think it is affected by other media. And I think that what we're not doing in the theater, and this has always been my bugaboo. I mean, from the time I started uh, writing, and that's why Unidentified Human Remains, all those short little scenes. I, I didn't grow up in the theater. I grew up on television. It's gotta be fast, it's gotta be happening. When I was five years old, it took them 60 seconds to sell me a chocolate bar. When I was 30 years old, it took them five seconds to sell me a chocolate bar. And it's not because I got dumber. It's because I actually got smarter and we all got smarter and we're all able to pick up information much more quickly and process it and carry it. And I don't think we see enough of that in the theater to bring the people who are fascinated with other media into the theater. And I, by that I mean we don't have to project things, we don't have to be electronic, but what we have to do is look at the language people are communicating with one another in and it's changing drastically all the time. And I think that um, the idea of a television structure to theater or a filmic structure is not a bad thing as long as you're theatricalizing it. I mean, again, with unidentified human remains, um, everyone who saw the play went, oh, wow, this is a movie already. Like, you don't have to do anything. And when Denny Arcan went to direct it, actually, the scenes were too short for film because in the theater, we have that peripheral knowledge of what's going on around us all the time and what's over there and what's over here. And we can choose where we look. In film, you can't do that. You have to show them what to look at, and if it's too short, it's not going to register. It has to register visually and audibly and all those other ways. And I think that part of our uh, challenge as playwrights and part of why people are not going to the theater right now is because we haven't really tapped into how are we communicating with one another now and what is the theatrical way that we do that. And it's not about typing things on screens and projecting things. It's about what is the vernacular? How, how are our brains working? How are we picking up information and how are we giving it back to people? And how can we find a way to theatricalize that and tell stories in that kind of structure and style? If that makes any sense. I'm a firm believer that um, many a technology has come and gone, but theater is, remains the same. Yeah, I'm not talking about technology. I'm talking about how we communicate. I'm talking about my own thing. I uh, just, um, and I just think that, um, you know, because um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. The theater has changed, changed over those years. Mm -hmm. Theater's changed, but what's not, what's not changed is having the experience uh, of viscerally feeling something and sharing that in, in, in a group, whatever, regardless of the size of that. And so that the theatrical experience. That's that's changed forms from from around campfires to to, to you know two thousand seat theaters, but, but be, that experience hasn't changed. Let me be more precise. Yeah, like the theater is an actor on stage, and a playwright gives them voice. And yeah, so the theater is actually a playwright on stage through the actor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let's start. Let's, let's be. Start. Yeah, exactly. Let's not put the cart before the horse, shall we? But no, but I was gonna. I just wanted to, to your point. I think that um, people uh, can can. The, the way in which um, people can uh, get stories in other mediums can change radically. And 
and people can become used to sound bites and stuff like that, but we'll always listen to opera, we'll always enjoy Hamlet, and we'll always, there's certain things that um, I think um, will just remain. Well, we'll enjoy good operas, and we'll enjoy good productions of Hamlet, and we'll enjoy good Grand Guignol, and we'll enjoy yeah. good revenge tragedies, and we'll yeah. enjoy good uh, realistic issue dramas, anything that's good. But theater does change, and it is very different, and I think that the resistance to change is what's getting us in trouble. And yes, people are a lot smarter now. The theater doesn't work the same way as it used to. We are, whether we like it or not, we are radically affected by electronic media, and it affects our brain and the way we think and the way we look at things. And I think a big reason that the young people don't go to the established theaters as opposed to the festivals and that kind of thing is because they don't, it's not a case of relating to the story, they don't relate to the way the story is being told. And it really makes me sad because nothing will ever replace the emotional impact of everybody getting together in the theater to see a really good, a really affecting theater experience. Ele electronics will never, ever be able to do that. I'm not worried about it, though. I don't, I don't think, I, I, I honestly don't think that uh, youth are being, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see it as being a, I don't know, I don't agree. I think that, you, you know. Uh, so you think there are people, you think we have enough people going to the theater? I think that, um, you know, there's a good show happening and it sells out, like you go to the Tarragon and buy, oh, let's, let's not go there. Well, like, let's just say that, that I think that, you know, there could be more people coming to see theater, but I'm not worried about theater disappearing. I'm not, the, I'm not worried about theater disappearing. I'm tired of theater not thriving. Right. I'm tired yes, of people yes. settling for the Tarragon and Factory and Canadian Stage right, right, right. and all this repetitive, mediocre bullshit that you've been looking at for 30 years that's gone nowhere. And there isn't a theater in this country, or probably this continent, that's not in trouble. Right, I think that's and I think it would, we would not be in trouble if we could bring people into the theater and if we could bring young people into the theater. And young people are not going to come in by a bunch of complacent middle-aged people sitting around being happy with what we've got right now. But also, too, I don't think it's the, the new technologies and the media and stuff like that that's stopping the young people. No, I don't, I, no I, that's what I I'm saying. So, but I don't yeah. think we're telling stories in yeah. the manner they want to experience them. Okay. I think one of the interesting ways that theater has changed is just looking at the makeup of the panel up here. The four of us come from four marginalized cultures, you could say, and the fact that I don't know if we would all have this panel 30, 35 years ago. Yeah. You're all playwrights. Well, 35 years ago, you might have got Tennessee Williams and uh, Arthur Miller and Dead White Things in the United States. Yeah. Some women, maybe. Wait, what about Lillian Helmet? Lillian Helmet. What's wrong? <laughs> What about exactly? 35 years ago. 35 years ago, they were, oh, that was me. Exactly. <laughs> I was here.